Okay. So. Just need to share. I can't share. Uh, maybe, Mark, you can share the notes. Well, you say you can't share. You should be able to. Huh. Okay, I can certainly share them though, if that'll help. Wait, weird. Here comes the shared screen. Oh, I can share. No, the, oh, the, good. The, the... Okay, we'll let you drive then. Mm. Have... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see my screen? No, this is not the thing. Yes. We can see the GitHub. Uh... GitHub, GitHub.com in dark mode. So you only see GitHub.com. Now we see the notes. So change a few seconds ago. Yes. So first few announcements. Uh, is it recording? Sorry. Yes. Okay, so I think we have to cut that first part of the video. So welcome everybody to this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. We have a few announcements on the sponsoring detail. Um, the first one is Amazon is going to renew the sponsoring. So last year they gave us $60,000 to cover the CI infrastructure. And we, got, we recently got confirmation that they will renew that sponsoring, which is really great. We just have some technical um, some implementation that we have to solve because what happened last year is so the current situation for the Amazon account that we are using is officially owned by CloudBees, and we have to transfer that account to the CDF. That's that was a long-standing project, and what happened last year is when when the um, Sponsoring, sponsoring arrived, it was, it appears in CloudBees um, billing information. And this is something that we want to avoid um, this time. So we are currently investigating if it's faster to transfer the account to the CDF, if it's faster to transfer the account to an independent organization um, or any other solution. But yeah, at least, at least the good thing is um, the cost will be covered. From a second sponsoring standpoint, um, Scaleway will offer some money. Um, if, my, if, if I remember correctly, it will be 600 euro per month. Um, so this is also some, um, some compute that will be able to use for the CI environment. In that specific areas, we may have some 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 work to do because the that that region would be a little bit further than um east to west coast so we may probably use that money for um a specific ci environment uh, we still have to 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 identify which one so if you want to help uh, with a scale way feel free to reach out and we can see how to 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 use that money um the goal is obviously to reduce it's always to reduce the cost of the Azure accounts and to to reduce the dependency on one specific cloud vendor um that's something that we try to do so for a long term that's really nice any inputs uh damien you want to bring here no um uh, i'm i just want to check if it's monthly i understand the same as you but i just want to be sure it's not a one shot uh, 600 euros because then that would yeah. be really cheap <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, I'm looking forward to work on that, that specific area. Um, before um, the next points, so if you, I go back to the agenda, 
we the first thing that I want to mention as well was the puppet agent issues we had. So we recently discovered a week ago that um, the certificate and the puppet infrastructure expired uh, two months ago. And so the puppet agent stopped working several months, two months ago um, at the same time. So that certificate was configured to work for five years. And um, we had not no monitoring in place so what we had to do which is a little bit cumbersome uh, was to first renew the certificate on the puppet master and now we have to go on every agent to renew the certificate so the agent can connect with the master um we did it for few machines trusted.ci archives.ci and um, we now have to continue um, bringing back everything um, on track And so in the process, we identified that some changes were not correctly applied. This mainly, this mainly affected Damien SSH keys um, that were not deployed on some machines. So he needed me to, to, to run the puppet agent. So that's still a work in progress. Any question on this? No, sounds perfect. So that, then let's um, continue. So the next topic, so we covered the um, AWS sponsoring, we covered the Scaleway sponsoring. So we have now the next topic to the agenda is agent on our, on our CI environment. Um, so Damien, I think you want to bring this as you, as you, as you're the one who've been working a lot on that, on that topic. Yep. So um, the initial goal, uh, and it's still the, the scope of the initial change is to update regularly the operating system packages and tools inside the agents. Uh, right now, CI, Jenkins, IO, and all other instances that we use are using images from December, which means we need to upgrade uh, the contents, the operating system mainly. And um, the main challenge we have, and we discovered, is that by updating, we have the latest uh, tools specifics per cloud on AWS, it's named SSM or EC2 Launcher. They provide services that your instance use to connect to the web services, get the instance data, get the private key, prints to the console, etc. And uh, at least for the EC2 plugin, it creates a big issue. It's that you have to wait for the instance not only to be start, started and uh, ready to be connected to, but also to start all the EC2 services. Sometimes it reboots. It resize the file system. It does a bunch of stuff before being able to print the fingerprint of the machine on the console, which means a machine that starts and is ready to use in one, eventually two minutes, might need eight to 10 minutes before being able to launch an agent. The main reason is because we use, uh, we try to use as much as possible a strong security that say, even the initial SSH connection is checked against the fingerprint that come from the cloud console. Just to be sure there is no man in the middle attack during the initial connection. After the initial connection, there is no risk because we always checked afterwards, but that's the first one. And the question is, oh, is it a real threat, the man in the middle for an initial SSH connection in our context? Because we build the MEI, these are not outside MEI, and most of the time it's inside a private network. However, that's still a risk. Uh, I'm not good enough to evaluate the potential of this one, but we have the challenge of, do we want fast instances or do we want uh, really safe instances during the connection? Uh, right now, the idea is to try to keep uh, the slowest instances. That's the proposal. I prefer staying safe but that creates challenges depending on the combination of operating system and cloud provider. So I'm not sure um, uh, one, that's enough details for, for this, but if you're interested or, want, or have an advice on that, not hesitate to ping me on the IRC. The second point is um, for the Linux instances, IRM and AMD, the goal is to use Docker as an unprivileged uh, uh, process, which means the root inside the container won't be the root of the virtual machine. The goal is to strengthen the bits on that part, which means we can totally target on Linux to use an unprivileged user for the Jenkins uh, agent, which means Jenkins agent is able to run container, but the Jenkins agent, even with container, 
is not able to uh, uh, to own or to be root. That's the goal. Windows for Windows, though, we don't have the unprivileged uh, Docker container engine. It's not possible. So that's why the initial reason is to keep the administrator user. The second reason is also because I haven't found a way to create a user on Windows. That's as simple as that. <laughs> you can create a user, but you don't have a home. You don't have a set of predefined settings, predefined keys. So on the end, the user must um, uh, be unprivileged. So that, that means no need to create an unprivileged user and add too much code to maintain. I prefer removing the code and get uh, started on that. So with these experiences that has been documented on the repository, the goal is to have the same set of images that should be updated at least monthly and deployed automatically on all the instances. So we will have the same behavior between for releases, for external contributor on CI and for us in the infra. So that should be end of the month for uh, that set of tasks. Thanks, Damien. Um, I, I would just, just add something quite important while you're looking at the Windows um, agents. We still have an issue in the release environment where we had to use a specific uh, version of the SSH plugin. Uh, so yeah, if, if you have enough time and feel confident, I mean, that's, if, if it's remain in your, um, the thing that you're working at the moment, maybe you could also look at it. Maybe that's something easy to fix. Uh, yeah, good pointer. Any other question? So, so then I, yeah, the oh, Mark. Sorry, Damien, you said that the goal is to have a similar configuration between agents in, in those various environments. Did I capture that correctly in the notes? CI and trusted and release and infra. Now cert yeah. is certainly one that Daniel cares about intensely and release is one that the release team cares about intensely. I don't see a problem with what you're proposing, but I assume we've got conversations with others uh, so that they know, hey, we're we, we would like to unify our handling of agents across all the, all the CI servers. So just something to, to specify here, that the release environments rely totally on Kubernetes. So we use um, Windows pods for the Windows parts. So Windows containers, and we use Linux containers running on Kubernetes. That's one thing. The other thing is um, the work that Damon is doing on CI to Jenkins.io, that's where we spend most of the money. So having fast Windows agents and stable Windows agent is pretty important for CI for the CI to Jenkins.io because uh, that's our biggest instance. Obviously, once we have a good process, we can definitely apply the same configuration to cert.ci, uh, to trust.ci um, as well. That's what we did in the past. The, 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 the previous situation that what we had before Damon started working, I mean, even I would say one or two years ago, we were just um, configuring everything from um, Jenkins. So when Jenkins would start an agent, it would install Docker, we would install the user, and we would just run a script for Windows agents. And then we started creating um, custom Windows machines uh, using Packer. Um, this is something that Alex started working on a year ago, maybe two years ago. And we realized that, for instance, on Trusted CI, we were still using the previous configuration. And that's the challenge of having configuration that we modify manually, is that sometimes we have a fix happening on one instance and it's not replicated on the other instances. And so the work that Damien is doing is to have small agent, a small, I mean, templates that we can reuse across different CI instances. Um, and this brings to the next topic, which is, um, having configuration as code for ci.jenkins.io and the idea would be to start using gcast to configure the cloud agents um, not not changing everything in one time but just working on one area at a time and uh, i think it would be really good um, to have that because the cloud configuration is quite big and when we have to go to the web interface it's quite difficult to know when we change something and we yeah that just having a configuration that we can commit and that people can review would be definitely easier. Okay. 
and obviously once we have i mean that's the same that happened on release.ci and infra.ci once you have a configuration as code file you can just copy paste the same configuration for a different instance and that's really easy to to, to use um but the, yeah, the main difference is ci the jenkins io and trust.ci are using Puppet to be deployed and we're not planning to change that in um and i mean in 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 a cluster i mean sooner so we will still use puppets uh, even for i mean probably for the coming year at, at least any question on that topic so i propose to move to the last one um so i had discussion about using discourse in the jenkins project so for those who are not familiar with discourse it's a tool that you, it's similar to a forum that's a tool where you can have people discussing we can group topic um regroup topics so that would be a nice way to organize um the various areas um in the jenkins project oleg initially came to me asking um if we could use this course for the user for the jenkins user um so we could use it uh, on top of the user mailing list i think it would also be great to use it for dev and for the infrastructure because this idea of having yeah to split the information into topic would would be really helpful i've been looking in the past to discourse to deploy it manually um that was not a great experience um that i mean i i don't want to go down that path so i would like to look at um either if we can have some sponsoring from um discourse or maybe pay for the service um right now when we start the trial we have 14 days to test it so if there are people interested to look at them I'll look at that with me once we have enough people to test this course i would like to yeah to just run a small experiment uh if you need any help don't hesitate to ask me because i've uh, did exactly the same for the traffic community i was in charge of testing evaluating deploying and maintaining it during the first year of existence so what, what I, was your experience there? Uh, I think that's a subject outside this, but it was overall okay. pretty good. I liked it. And you have a way to personalize, customize, and that the, the conclusion was the same. Maintaining it ourselves is complicated. Uh, so if you have to do it, just be prepared to have uh, way more things. And it was working really smoothly uh, on their web service. I never had any incident on one and a half. So that, that's quite nice and you can tune a lot of things. There are a lot of plugins, integrations, customization on the look and feel. So that a nice service, really overall positive experience. I think that would be also nice to look at the sponsoring options because I know that the CEO is sponsoring the Jenkins project um, on the LFX uh, community bonding project. Uh, yeah, so you had sponsorship uh, from this course. Uh, Whatever the name of the company, it's a bit complicated, uh, but yeah, we got quite significant sponsorship. Um, I believe that we could get uh, sponsorship for managed service. And moreover, um, I was uh, been working with uh, a few other communities recently. And for example, one of the communities, open source design, they use a sponsored version of this course from the vendor company. So they don't manage the discourse on their own. They just get it as a managed service. Yeah, so such kinds of sponsorships, yeah, they imply potential risks if sponsorship gets continued, et cetera, like we experienced with other services. But at the same time, you wouldn't need to, to manage it on our own. So for experiment, it seems to be like a good approach. Um, and then we can discuss whether we would like to host this course on our own or press it with a managed service. So as a board member, I offer my help if you need some whatever collaboration with uh, the vendor company. Um, but yeah, uh, technically it's totally possible. And I believe that uh, if we uh, ask, um, there's good probability that we would be able to get sponsorship. And otherwise the cost is 1,200 per year. So it's mm, definitely not the, the plan. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, we can potentially even pay for this discourse from even our current infrastructure budget. I wouldn't say that it's the desired approach, 
uh, but uh, so Discord uh, vendor uh, donated twenty five hundred dollars to us. So potentially it covers the cost for two years of managed service uh, just to by that. And we haven't allocated this donation anywhere. Yeah. We are a pretty good candidate to the. We should be a pretty good candidate to the open source program uh, for the record with uh, traffic. They evaluated that traffic, even though the source code is open source, traffic is only maintained by one company, which is Containers. So they, we were not candidates. They refused uh, and we had to pay for that. But uh, two years ago, at least, they said Jenkins was an, an example of an open source project when we asked. So they said they are, that's very well known. There are company, different people from different interests. They considered us at least two years ago, three years ago now. Uh, as a candidate, so that should be a good, still a positive uh, thing. I don't know how with the experience, but don't don't get me wrong. Maybe they will say the same, and they will ask us to pay because CloudBees is behind or something. They can always find this. So. Yeah. Let's ask. Thanks. Thanks for your inputs. So we cover all the points that we had that we have for the agenda today. So if you have any last topic you want to bring and discuss here, um, otherwise we can close the meeting. Well, so more FYI than anything, but the weekly release has been temporarily delayed and intentionally delayed by a day so that we can get a little bit more time to evaluate a possible change. Uh, it was in the release channel. It's nothing that Infra needs to do about it. Just be aware, don't enable the weekly build process at the moment, let Tim Jacome continue managing that. I've been, especially, especially for that, I've been considering disabling um, the management of the release instance. So um, commenting the file, because the, the risk that we have here is if for some reason we restart the Jenkins instance, we, 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 we remove the lock on the job. Well, the, uh, cron that's, is already over, so yeah. In this case, in this case, that's fine because that's a cron job, and so we are over the, the the date anyway. But I've been thinking doing the same for trusted CI, so that would be pretty simple if my mouse want to go back. So it would just be trusted CI. No, no, sorry, I, I didn't want to say trusted. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm authenticated. Uh, just in case you're still sharing. Yeah, I know. And I know that's what I want to do. So if we go to um, cluster, public here, in, if we just comment, uh, let's say in the release environment, where is that? Jenkins release. If we just comment this line, um, the job will not be managed by infra.ci. So the, 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 that application won't be managed. So we can temporarily disable uh, any modification done to that, that service. And I think this is something that we should do in the future. Yes, Mark, you seems a bit. Um... I, I, I don't object, it just, it didn't. It, this particular condition I think is handled well enough by the job being disabled and as Daniel noted, the cron job but if, if you think that would be a good safeguard, that's great as well. I just would hate to have lost the management of that because we forgot to enable it again after this period is done. So we, we have two jobs that need to be disabled here. We have the release job um, on release.ci, but we also have the infra management job that manage the Kubernetes cluster. So if for some reason we update Jenkins, if for some reason, uh, yeah, if there is an update on Jenkins, and we accidentally merge that change. Um, Kubernetes will be updated and obviously we restart the, the Jenkins instance. So we restart release.ci. So that's why I was suggesting to just comment this line. So we are sure that um, we, we, don't, we don't update the service accidentally. So, so in, in this case for this weekly, that's fine. I'm just thinking for future uh, security release or, or stable release. Yeah, I just wanted to mention this is mostly relevant for security updates um, because we skipped the weekly in the week of the security update. And um, that has happened, I think, once or twice now that I uh, disabled a job, 
three, four, five days later, someone merges something, Jenkins restarts and the job is enabled again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that's why that that's why I was thinking to this. Um, and yeah, if we just put a comment in that YAML file, I think that should be part of the, the process. Great. Okay. Um, any other topic? Then I propose to finish the meeting here. Uh, thank you for your time. Oh, uh, already put. Hang on, Olivier. Yes. Go ahead, Olivier. With a quick update. Okay. Uh, so we, we did some progress on AWS sponsorship. So we still uh, to be communicated to public, uh, but we we, sh we shared uh, we shared that topic at the beginning of the meeting. Okay, I was late to that. Sorry. Okay, but no other update from me. No, 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 I just shared that um, we have agreement from Amazon um, to renew the, um, the sponsor, the sponsoring. We are just trying to figure out the best way to the best location for the um, Amazon accounts. Uh, yeah, so this is what we agreed on. So currently, uh, the account is uh, owned by CloudBees. Uh, we had some issues related uh, to that uh, in the previous years. So the idea is that we would start uh, a new account and um, uh, we move uh, Jenkins resources there and then we would connect sponsorship. So that sponsorship is dedicated on the, to the Jenkins account. And after that, uh, the company will be looking uh, for opportunity to transfer ownership of this account to the Continuous Delivery Foundation so that it's officially under the roof of CDF like uh, our uh, Microsoft accounts. So that's the plan, uh, no timeline for that. Uh, but yeah, we initiated the first steps um, and working uh, the sponsorship. One of the major benefits to transfer that account to the Lean CDF would be to invite non CloudBees employees there, because right now only CloudBees employees can have access to the Amazon account, which is a blocker. Um, in the past, we saw that key contributors who had access to Azure to the Azure account really help to unblock situation. And right now um, we have strong dependencies yeah, on, on, I mean, the number of people who have access to that account increased um, because we have Mark, we have Oleg, we have Damien, we have me. But I mean, a year ago, I was the only one to have access to that account. So there was, yeah. there was not a beast factor because, yeah. sorry? Yes, strategically, it should be transferred to the Continuous Delivery Foundation. We had a discussion about that more than a year ago at the time, but nobody had time uh, to do that. We had uh, much more serious issues with uh, Asia accounts. Now, Asia problem is more or less settled. And we are thanks to Olivia for pushing that because finally, as a board member, I received uh, the invoice first time. Uh, so at least uh, the process gets streamlined. Uh, so yeah, now we can focus on the um, uh, AWS. And, and while we talk about Azure accounts, um, we still have to reduce the cost of that account. So with the recent change that we did to the mirroring infrastructure, we already reduce, um, but it's still too early to, to know um, how much we reduce the cost, but we should definitely reduce. I hope to reduce by $1,000 um, based on the change we did two weeks ago. But uh, even so, this $1,000 reduction, you will be above the target, right? Yeah, exactly. So the, the, the challenge is every services keep growing um, and so while we had um, that issue with the mirror infrastructure, we still have to optimize, um, especially in the CI agents. So I hope that the work that Damien is doing to um, increase uh, the time to, 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 to start an agent will also affect the, um, the billing. But we have to work on that. But we are running over time. Um, so thanks everybody. Thank, thank you for your time and see you on RC. And before I before you leave, I already put the notes to the next meeting agenda. So if you already have ideas that you know you want to discuss next week, uh, feel free to add them. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.